Yes, hello. Um, my name is Tarek Ederson. Um, I teach uh, history and social science at middle school in um, Bergen. Uh, three years ago, me and um, two of my co-teachers wanted to be looking at our uh, education in a bit different way and try to engage the students more in our classroom. So we started um, with uh, two classes of eight graders and also um, connected with a group of uh, special needs students. So they were joining this program. Uh, we started with um, computer games, uh, drones, 3D printings and a lot of different stuff. And um, mainly tried to build an education that was a bit different from what we'd done before. We, we skipped um, textbooks um, and used a lot of different experts and uh, went into the community and tried to get uh, people and make them use of them in the classroom. Uh, about one year ago I was on YouTube and saw a um, TED talk by John Hunter and uh, he was talking about this role-playing game or strategy political simulator. I was trying to find a good way to explain the World Peace game and I was inside the website for the World Peace game and I didn't quite understand what it was because it was mainly a lot of hard words. Um, so I've, I've been trying to study the game but I really didn't quite understand it. Not before I realized that this guy here, that's my students and this is John Hunter. Uh, so he's actually been playing the game with John Hunter uh, for three years in um, the USA. So I asked him if he could get me in contact with John Hunter. Uh, so we spoke. Uh, there was a lot of complication to get, mainly try to get the game to Norway. Uh, there were a lot of regulation, but we managed to do it. And then I also got in contact with a Norwegian player that played the game in the um, uh, USA called Eric Orbot. So I got together with him. Uh, and we talked about the game uh, and we decided that we wanted to try to play the game with our students. Um, we had a lot of problems because in USA John Hunter played this with 4th graders minus 10th graders. Uh, he plays with about 20 students and this is the master students, the really excellent students in the United States are playing game. I have a lot of different students, a lot of student with different needs. So we had to be looking at how we could play it uh, and compare it with the game that they played in um, the United States. So what we did was we had uh, we actually first made a game. This is one level. It's four different levels and um, you see how much stuff that goes on. So we made 3D printers and a lot of stuff and we built the game. Uh, that was the first obstacle that had to be fixed. Uh, the second one was how to introduce the game to the students. Uh, John Hunter played this game throughout the whole year in the United States. We had one week. Uh, so what we did, we had three workshops with the students before we started playing the game. Uh, and this is something that John Hunter never did. So we mainly, but we tried to get the student really motivated for the game. So we had them divided into groups. We had looked at what was identity, what is a country. We made flags. We talked a lot about different countries, what makes a country, how to, to have an identity and so on. Because the purpose of the game is mainly that the students play four different countries. You see the different colors here. And then you have a lot of different challenges. It's 28 challenges, a, a big variety, it might be pollution, it might be drones falling into the sea, it might be you have this island here, they found gold, you don't really know which country owns it. So there's a lot of different conflicts that the students have to solve. Um, so we try to introduce mainly first, not the game itself, but mainly what is a country, how does a country work. Uh, they chose the Prime Minister, the Finance Minister, and all those different tasks. Um, and then we started our day. And I'll um, show you the, what we did. 
Uh, we actually had a um, bug production company that's, uh, that makes film. They got some money, so they was actually with us for a whole week and filmed the whole uh, week. And we made this promotion video. So I'm going to be putting that on the Facebook side if anybody wants to see it because it's about 15 minutes long. So, uh, But I think I'll just show you the introduction. Is the sound on the... Yeah, it's... Just see if I can put it a little bit. Okay, it was full. It's in Norwegian, sadly, but um, so this is all my students. So the first thing they did was this name tags, um, and then they just were divided into the different groups. So we actually moved the classroom um, from the school and down to the local library. And you said, well, you said about using the theater or the museum. I recommend use the libraries too because we got an immense help from the libraries. We spent the whole week down there and just moved down our classroom. So the students were sitting here, and then they have Eric. He was the main facilitator the first two days, and then we took over for one or two days. Uh, and we also had Jens, which see the picture, he was one of the facilitators. Uh, so all the students were sitting there, they were divided into different countries. We had um, different tasks for them. We had uh, people selling guns. We had, uh, I'll see, we had the United Nations, we had the United Nations Court. Uh, we have the World Bank, and they had all different tasks. So everything needed to be done in a proper way. The students were first discussing the different crises. They come up with a solution. They went to the UN to ask, OK, do you, is this correct? And the UN looked at it, OK, this is correct. If there were some conflicts, they might have to go to the court to decide. They could get money from the, the World Bank, and so on. So there's a lot of different. Um, scenarios and the students have to be really really engaged. Uh, one of the challenges with this game is that this is really high level thinking. So we have some of the special ed students that was a little bit problem but they were the media. So they covered the whole thing. So we, the whole World Peace game was on Facebook, it was on Twitter, it was on Snapchat, it was on Instagram uh, and we just sent it out live what was happening. So they covered um, uh, the story uh, and they were also in in some of the other groups, the, the warmongers and so on, they were introduced there. Um, so we played this game for a week. It was a lot of different challenges. And one of the, the hard parts here is the students run everything. Um, so I, as a teacher, was mainly sitting on the side uh, doing nothing. Uh, and mainly just trying not to get involved. Because as a teacher, you have that inside you that, okay, maybe I should just go tell that student, maybe he can do that one. But uh, we just kept each other in place because we didn't want to ruin the game for students. If the students running the whole thing, was students making decisions. If something went wrong, it was all up to the students. Uh, and they also had this challenge because this was, we had this big clock that was ticking down because we just had the, the five days of a lot of different challenges. Uh, so in the beginning, the students were really, really relaxed. Okay, this is no problem. We have a good time. And then the two days, three days went off, and I was, you saw the expression of the students. Okay, we really need to be doing something because it's, we don't have that much time. So they were really effective at the end. So it was really funny to see the, the difference from the, the Monday to Friday in efficiency and how they mainly discover, okay, if you want to be making a solution that goes for the whole world. We can't just be thinking about our country. We need to be thinking all countries together. Because the purpose of the game is to create world peace and that all the different countries have improved their, uh, both their money and their mainly everything inside. Uh, and you talked also about what you do after the game. I'll show you one example of what I did uh, after the game was finished. Uh, this is one of the tasks the students had after we were done. Because in the game, 
what happened was that one of the students faked the check um, because they had to be getting money to the country. So he faked the check, went into the World Bank, got money. And then the World Bank found, okay, <laughs> there's something wrong here. Uh, who's been faking a check? And then they, okay, it, I think it was his. And then they mainly had this trial. Uh, they went into like an, an actual trial. And what we did afterwards was that we looked at the trial itself and then decided if this was a real life, what court would it have been into? Uh, would pre-trial detention be used for this case? And what evidence was used in a world peace game trial? And could this evidence have been used in a real court case? And then the student wrote papers about this one. This was just one of the tasks. But one of the things that I found was really, really interesting was that I had one question for the students after they were done, because in the game there's a lot of talk about refugees. Um, and the refugees mainly get sent everywhere because they, you have to pay a lot of money if you're having a refugees. And the trouble was that one country, okay, we were sending them up to this country because they're richer. Okay, and then what ended was that the, all the refugees were sent out to this island by themselves and just handed some um, uh, tents um, and that was it. Uh, and actually the warmongers hired soldiers from the refugee camps so they sold them or hired them as soldiers afterwards. All this was happening in the game. So my question afterwards was how did you look at the refugees um, and explain how we did it. And a lot of students said it afterwards they were really in the game they mainly just thought about the refugees as a, something that cost money. They didn't think of them as people. So we got a lot of great discussion afterwards. Okay, is this something that's really happening in the world today? People talk about refugees as mainly a source that we need to be paying money for, or something that we don't talk about as people. We talk them about in a way, different way. Uh, so and that is something I feel with this game, that you can get a lot of great discussion. And for me, that's, as you said, it's not game itself. I don't play this game that they're just going to have a great time. I play this game because they need to be learning. Uh, and for me, the learning comes from the discussion and all, everything you can do after the game is done. Uh, because there's so much you can be discussing. And we're doing the Cold War project now. And we've been looking at the game. And then we'll be looking at what, happened, it, what did happen in the Cold War. And then they had to compare them. Um, and as I tell the students, this is you need a lot higher level of thinking to do this one and just write me a paper about the Vietnam War because then you can mainly just give me a Wikipedia link and, and you're done. Uh, but here you need to be going in, it's not, you can't be just typing into Google. You need to be, have a really, really high level of thinking to do these kind of games. Um, and this game is very, very complex if you look at it all. And we had five teachers, nobody done any role-playing games at all uh, and then you have we had Eric that was the main expert but we all just dove into it and um, <laughs> my girlfriend is um, not the most positive person in the world because I do a lot of work I do a lot of work with schools so and she's a little bit annoyed by that one so everything I did have to be doing it underground so it wasn't <laughs> that obvious that I <laughs> spent a lot of time on it so it is possible uh, but it takes a lot of planning. Uh, I would recommend everybody to do this game in class, but I would recommend it to use the discussion afterwards because that's what's really valuable. Um, for me, I started the 10th grade and I, we still discuss it in class and use it as an example of, of different things that happen in history. And it, for me, it's a lot easier for the students to discuss things when they have the World Peace game, they can use that one as an example. Uh, and I also like that it's not black and white uh, in the game too. You can choose different ways. It's, it doesn't have like a script how to solve the different uh, crisis. And that for me is something that's very important in the classroom too. Um, that it, it is not black and white. It's not that I want to be hearing your opinion. Um, and that is the students. It's a lot easier for them to engage in the discussion when they know it might not be right or wrong. That they, they can give their opinion as long as they can uh, give any reasonable arguments that will work. So that is why I've been really 
fond of this game. Uh, and we will be we trying to use this for all our uh, students at school now. But it takes one person really knows the game, so that is what we've been uh, building now. We had two teachers went to Prague to play this game with John Hunter uh, this year, so we will hopefully we'll be managed to play this game uh, next year with all our students. Uh, but it, it takes some time. This one took one week, and then we had three sessions of one-day workshops, about eight weeks, eight days total. I mean, so it's. Um, No, but we mainly did it. Uh, I work with three other teachers and we don't count ours. It's like I teach those subjects and they, and then we just mix them all together. But we are very open about it. Yeah, the arts and craft teachers and um, the different German and all those subjects. We mainly just said we want this week. <laughs> That's <laughs> yeah, but, but but we had three teachers. We mainly have all the subjects inside the class. It was mainly just art and a couple of other subjects. And if they miss one session, they normally don't scream too loud. Especially if you just say, "Okay, we can get get some more session from us." But we we do a lot of different things like this one, uh, where we just okay, this whole day we're going to be spending on. Uh, English or uh, math or whatever. So that is. Was this like, yeah, how old are your students? My students are 15. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, one, one idea of mine is playing this game in eighth graders because when they start school, because this is a really good introduction to school and it, they learn from each other and it might be a good exercise for them to get to know each other. At the same time, I think the game really works too because the student know each other and they wasn't afraid to get into arguments. And that's something I love. I love students getting into arguments. Uh, it's one of my favorite things because uh, they need to be challenged. They need to be learning. And this goes especially for my quiet girls. As I tell them, you need to be standing up. You need to be standing up for yourself. You need to be showing your opinion. Uh, so we, we're doing a lot of um, not comp in competitive in one way, but they need to be are putting just, okay, we're going to be having about uh, the Cold War, you're going to be Russia, and you're going to be explaining why the Russia, whatever, all the things Russian did was okay. So th they have to have opinion that they might not believe in themselves. They need to be standing up for themselves either way. Uh, so this is the World Peace Game. So we, we're trying to make this an annual event. Yeah. Any other questions? Yeah. Uh, I guess one thing. I forgot that one. Um, I'll be putting this one out too, but um, um, I just have to show this one. In this is my students. Um, And as I said, the students are getting really, really good in English now. So we, so we went to Trondheim and uh, presented at the TEDx. Uh, so I'm putting this one on on the YouTube, if we, no, on the Facebook for those who want to see. So he did a performance at the TEDx, uh, and he was brilliant. So he's um, 15 years old, and I can't be doing what he's doing. So uh, it was, I was just happy I was on the stage with him because he's. Uh, <laughs> A lot better than me than English. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's what I'm doing. And so that I'll put a, so we, he explained the game and what the outcome for the students was. So that might be interesting for you to see. Yes, then I finished. <laughs>